Yo, Elliot, I have been having ongoing issues with my fiance for a few months now. It started in August when she broke my trust after catching her with another man, flirting over Messenger. She was also going out with her friends from work who got high and drunk every weekend around sketchy parts of town, even though she wouldn't partake in the activities herself. That's a huge red flag, girl, dude. A girl's friends is a bigger indicator as to who she is than what she says. I told one enough was... I told one enough was enough and didn't let that and didn't let and that was when I found out about the flirtatious flirtatious meth, uh, message. She said I haven't been around and I was working all the time so it was nice to just talk to someone. Oh. We argued and came to a conclusion to spend more time together to build back up only for me to find messages again a couple of days later. I left the house to console, console with a friend, and she then sent messages saying she was going to take her life. Ugh. We stopped her, and she understood how she messed up. Since then, we've been rebuilding the trust and connection, but she has trouble holding a job and being responsible with money. The week just before I found the messages, she lost her job and decided to use the last of her money to buy an expensive VR headset. Gaming in general with her takes up too much of her time, and she can't seem to save up for a car. She spends her money on junk food, games, and collectible figures, especially more now so that she works at Target. <laughs> I feel as though she's holding me back, and I'm just tired of it. I do genuinely love her and care for her health, but it always seems to spiral out of control, and I can't seem to hold a job. And she, Oh, she can't hold a job. I don't want to break up with her, but I feel as though it would be necessary or at least to kick her out of my house, which is not in my name, so she can't legally come after anything. My concern is with her mental health and how to handle this. This back and forth struggle to get her to think rationally on her situation is overdraining. Any advice would be appreciated. So the, the first thing I would offer you is acknowledgement for the way you're proposing to deal with this, program, this problem. Right? You said, I need to create space. I need to create space from her. And that is 100% right. You are hypnotized and addicted to this, sorry, toxic woman. It doesn't seem that there's anything very good about her. One thing, though, will keep you tied to a woman who cheats on you, who uses drugs or hangs out with people that use drugs, who's bad with her money, who eats a, bunch, a lot of junk food, uh, who's deceiving, she, she doesn't tell the truth, has mental problems, all these things. I mean, it's just, it's just more red flags than a Chinese parade, right? A lot of red flags. I, there's, I haven't heard you say anything good about her. You know why I think that you're tolerating all these red flags, even though there doesn't seem to be anything good about her? Because you're having sex with her. If you're having sex with her, you're tied to busting your nut and having orgasms with her body. And that is enough for most men to stay in a bad situation. It's hard even to see the red flags because you have on sex goggles. So I agree that you need to create separation from her. Kicking her out is one thing, but stop having sex with her is really where it's at. Because the only reason, you know, I don't know for sure, but in situations like this, usually the only reason why God, a guy is tolerating a woman like this is because he gets sex. You have to pull back, not only so that she doesn't continue to have the power over you, right? Because now you have, now you have a lesser being, right? And I have no problem saying that. There are some people that are better than others. Not everybody's equal. Not everybody's the same. You are dealing with, you're being yoked unevenly, right? They say that in the Bible, right? Don't, don't be unevenly yoked. Don't deal with someone who's, that's not a good choice. That's a, that's a bad person, right? There are, there are people that are bad for you. I hate to say it. People don't like to hear it. They think everybody's great, but not everybody's great. Not everybody's great. But it's hard for you to see how you're being manipulated and drag, dragged along by this deceitful, dishonest, destructive, degenerate woman if you're still having sex with her. So when you say have a, have, a, have a space from her, good. Yeah, you know what? Maybe kick her out. I would say that's not a bad idea. You do need that kind of space. But don't kick her out and then we go into her house or having her coming over and you guys are having sex multiple times a week. 
You need to stop having sex with her. You need to go on a sex fast. You know how I spoke about earlier today that, you know, I'm fasting again. And it's the most amazing thing because as I begin fasting, my perspective starts changing, right? When I, that pattern interrupt of fasting, taking me out of that, that constant consumption allows my head to rise above my circumstances. And I almost get a new a new lease on life, a new view of my life. I can see myself most objectively because I created separation between me and some sensual pleasure that, I, that is essentially perverting my mind, which is overeating, right? Eating too much. And I'm not like obese overeater, but constant consumption is a sin. This is why all religions ask us to fast. I would propose that if you go on a sex fast, right? No nut November, right? But not even no nut because you could do Carezza sex and not bust nuts. No sex, no sex. And I would say, I would say, I mean, you've been with this girl, you said, I don't know how long you've been with her, but you're having problems with several months now. I would say take several months as a break, right? Take three months, say between now and the end of the year, that's two months. Take two months and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to spend the holidays. I need, I need some space during the holidays this year, right? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to use this time to find myself again and this is what women oftentimes will say i want to go find myself which that means going having sex with lots of other men not you that's not what you're going to do you're going to find yourself meaning i'm going to rediscover myself without you and i'm going to dedicate myself like you say you're a hard-working guy you got your own jobs right you're not playing video games and vr headsets with this chick you're out there grinding hustling doing your thing you need some time away from her so that you can reassess your life and recalibrate the direction you're going. Sex fast, sex fast. If you are ever curious about a woman, if you're ever not sure about a woman in your life, this is to all of you guys in here. If you're ever not sure, and, or in fact, if she's a good choice, but you want to make sure she's the right choice, right? You might not have any problems with her, but if you want to make sure she's the right choice before you commit, right? You say, this is it, right? I think it's beautiful to, to be with, I think monogamy is awesome, right? course because i do it but i enjoy the benefits of it i like it uh i think it's great but before you decide to marry this woman or you decide to, to even move her into your house or anything go on sex fast and tell her that you're doing it say i'm you know we're, i need to go on a sex fast from you you will see her true colors not just because your vision will clear up but because she's going to start acting a little different <laughs> She going to start acting a little different and you're going to start because she's going to get upset. She will like if I mean, not all women, but if she gets upset, if she gets upset and she's like getting mad at you and, and so I'm not going to get sex from you. I'm going to go somewhere else. She's going to show you her true colors. You start having sex with a woman and she starts changing on you and acting weird. It's because she knows she can't manipulate you no more with that puss. The only reason why a guy would be with someone like this this long is because she got you tied to the puss. Right. So the minute you pull, the minute you pull back from the puss, she's going to be like, oh, expose. Oh, I don't have anything to offer. What am, what am I actually doing for this guy? I can't even give him my sex because he doesn't want it right now. She's going to freak out. And when she freaks out, she's going to show you her true colors. This is a good idea for all men who are seriously considering a woman or if you're having problems with a woman. Tell her, don't do it covertly, be overt. We need to take some space from each other, particularly having sex. Tell her, I need to go on a sex fast. Blame yourself. Say, I need, I need to just discover some things. I need to be clear about myself, about some things in my life. And as a result, I'm taking a break from having sex with you, right? A woman like this, maybe, maybe you do meet up, you kick her out of your house, maybe, maybe you do meet up with her once in a while, right? Maybe once in a week you guys decide to meet up at a restaurant or something or have coffee together and spend a little time together, see if you enjoy each other's company without sex. If you could enjoy her company, she could enjoy your company, and she remains chaste during this sex fast, then maybe she maybe there's hope. Maybe there's hope. If you go on this sex fast and she's chaste and she's She's uh, still honorable towards you and she doesn't go out and, you know, obviously she's got a track record for cheating. But if you find that or, you know, whatever, I don't know how you discover it. But if you find that she's being she's being faithful 
and chase during this time. And you could even poise that to her too. Say, hey, look, you're going to do whatever you want. But I propose that if you're serious about me and you're serious about this relationship, you take a break from sex too, right? I can't, you can't stop her. She's going to go out there and she's going to do whatever she want. She's going to do whatever she want. Hopefully she's honest with you and tells you. Chances are she won't. But the bottom line is you'll start to discover things. You start to sense things. You start to get a little bit more clarity on things. And by the way, it's very clear to me that you don't need this check. It's very, I don't need this fast, but you do because you're the one that's addicted to see that she ain't a good woman. Right? She ain't a good woman. And it sucks. I know, guys, because to hear me say, right, who are you, Elliot? To hear me say, yeah, that ain't a good woman. She ain't a good woman. I don't know you. I don't know her. I don't know your circumstances. All I'm reading is what, I'm, what I see on this page. And when I say, pull back, stop having sex with her, then perhaps you could see, oh, shit. It wasn't, it's not a good woman. Elliot was right, right? She has all the sim signs and symptoms of a bad woman, except she got sweet, gushy, cushiony, slippery, slidey, smelly stuff between her legs that you're addicted to. And so pull back, men. Pull back if you want to know yourself rightly, you want to walk the righteous path, and you want a woman that's going to walk that with you in a resourceful way, not someone that's going to, drag you down this is again this is i don't want to beat a dead horse which is one of the reasons why i think fornication is a bad idea for men right I, we can talk about it in regards to women we already kind of know the issues with regard to women we like to point and blame the women but it's our fault and one of the one of the biggest issues for us right one of the things one of the things that destroys us is that we begin we become accustomed to and addicted to having sex with bad women that destroy our lives you just because you because you love boning and blowing loads in her, you go and get her go and get her pregnant, or you know decide well, let's let's be married, let's be together, let's be together for a long time. She can destroy your life. She can destroy your life, but you can't see it. Just like a drug addict, right? You're a drug addict, right? I know I'm beating up your girlfriend a lot, but I'm gonna beat you up a little bit here too. You're a drug addict. You're, what is a drug addict? A drug addict is somebody who keeps taking that drug even though it's destroying my life, right? Right? You, you know it's ruining your health. You know it's ruining your family. It's ruining your career. Why did you stop taking the drug? Oh, I can't. This chick is ruining your life. She's a bad choice, but you can't stop. So take a break. Create distance from her, and I think you'll be all right, dude. I am curious to hear how it, how it all unfolds for you, dude, so keep me posted. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.